yet. Um, I was just applying because I had this anxiety of like, because when you leave varsity, you go into a government position where you're just like, as such a privileged idiot, you're like, I don't want to work for the government. And you're yeah. like, it's a job with benefits. Yeah. Hello. Like yeah. they pay you extra money to, because they put you out in Kimberley, like a bit further away as an inconvenience. You've got a pension plan from the time you're 20. I'm like, working for the government's not a bad thing. It's not a thing. bad thing, yeah. And then I left that and then I started working in the world of private and wanting to work for people. And then my first interview, this lady's like, you're great, but I'm not going to give you the job. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Why? Because she's like, I just, I feel for somebody like with a lot of potential that I see, you need to go and experience so many different versions of this before you settle for your first. So she's like, go and locum. And I was like, okay, lady, kind of weird, <laughs> you know. And then I did that and I, and I locum for like six or seven months, like six days a week. So what's locuming? Just like being the stand in. So your doctor's sick okay. on holiday. I'm the guy that is also like just in the medical profession, doesn't yeah. have the same connection to the patient. So that like in private practice, you lose a little bit of that connection and that. That's, that's my doctor, like in the same way you talk about your hairdresser that just knows yeah. how to manage you, yeah. you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, so then I did that. And then I, after, I think the one job I had, I left and I wanted to sue my ex-employer. And that's when I learned about labor law and basic conditions of employment. And Why did you want to sue them? Because they were taking advantage of somebody that they thought just like wouldn't know to like go ask the questions. It's so, like, that feels kind of weird and funny in like, what There's kind some of rights. So like you would just be expected to go see um, patients on your time. And there's no such thing as overtime because like when you work amongst public holidays, it'd be like, oh, we're just going to split public holidays amongst each other. And then mm. it's fair. <laughs> and I'm like, no, but like there's money in my it's pocket works, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it was yeah. something so stupid, like putting in notice and then not coming back to work, being told not to come back. And that's when I learned about like being paid in lieu of, you know, if you're mm. not being fired. And I was like, okay, these are some cool life foundational lessons you need to learn. And yeah, so then had my own practice because I got tired of making other people money. Okay. And they were never there. So I'm like, how hard can it be to keep the lights on? <laughs> so you start your own practice, yeah, your own physio practice. Yeah, my own physio practice. Right. Um, I was 20, the week I turned 25, mm. opened my own practice. Um, went to go advertise at a jiu-jitsu academy because I was like, what's got a high rate concentrated guys that inflict pain and injury amongst sounds, each other like, MMA. Right. Yeah, MMA. <laughs> I was like, this a is a good start. long business plan yeah, solid business <laughs> and then like all I was was just like this pretty girl that can give massages and I'm like mm. I'm gonna ride that as well because it's still money in the bank thank you very much I'm gonna be professional <laughs> and I've got dry needles if you get a little bit too like unnecessary yeah. exactly so um but anyway no like jokes aside um Got my practice, saved up money. Because um, also I was like, I had a, like a genuine conversation with myself. Like, you have no kids. You, you've you been going through a shitty breakup with somebody that's been like dragging you along for two years. Mm. And then I just had this moment where I was like, you need to like focus on something bigger than your like obsession with how much pain you have with this asshole <laughs> that right. doesn't want you around still. Yeah. And then, yeah, so I opened my, and I literally just felt like I did like a, you know, like the Care Bears energy. Yeah. I just like directed it into like, back then I didn't know it was myself, but it was something that, like a project that would benefit myself. Mm. Obviously that was just like my intuition, like self-care and love is right. like all you need. Yeah. <laughs> and you're 25 at this point. I was 25. I did, it didn't make sense to me, but I was like, mm. I think it was just like the most primal, like fight or flight survival that was just taking care of me, even though I didn't know what the, if I was doing, yeah. and if I'm allowed to swear on this. Yeah, you, yeah, you oh, can. Okay. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're, we're an open, open platform. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that. Get except it for that. <laughs> <laughs> except for that. It's the only word. Dial it back. Okay, I was <laughs> testing the waters. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, you took it there. <laughs> I guess that's a no. Sorry, I'm I was kidding. I was kidding. <laughs> you can say whatever. Can I take my jacket off? You're yeah, yeah go ahead. I took mine off. I took mine off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blushing. Okay. Okay. I had to be that person. Though. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you start you start your practice start at twenty five. Start my practice, and then and I have like <clears throat> this love hate relationship with it. Where I think by my fourth year, <laughs> I remember having this like this conversation. I think it was with my therapist because I started seeing my therapist like in my second year mm. of of running my business, and I was like the only human beings I interact with is in a small room where there's this like unidirectional flow of energy where they're talking about pain and what causes them pain and how's the pain is a bit, you know? Yeah. And I was like, I don't know if that's good for a person, you know, because also I was in a space, I think just in my life where I was like regrouping and 
now being a business person and a clinician and being a girl that's 25 and trying to be single or whatever. Yeah. And then um, I think it took me about two years before I like recognized that I didn't want it anymore. <laughs> Cause I was like saying to my friend this time, I'm like, I feel like I prayed so hard to have a baby. And I went through IVA for years and years and years. And this kid turned out to be a dick. <laughs> I'm like, but you wanted it, <laughs> you know? So yeah. I, I spend like a lot of time making a business work. I think even though skills wise, I could have returned to it, but I think I just burnt myself out by trying so hard to make something that like wasn't fitting, you know, just like structurally and what it was providing for me. Right. And it was a difficult, it was a dis- difficult decision to actually actively step away from it. And it happened quickly, probably in about three months. And I find those types of things, like when it happens that quick, like sometimes it's just, it's the most natural path you exactly. should go with True. instead of questioning it. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, walk, and then probably for like a whole year after, I still have patients texting me like, are you sure you're not coming back? And people mm. will be like, that was your life calling. And I'm like, I understand that. But like, it's difficult to say like something that you love is like not good for you for the rest of your life. Yeah. And that's like a very like, because like I, I decided I was being a fuzzy when I was 10 years old. Oh, yeah. Actually, like, yeah. How did, how did you even know what that was? Oh, because <laughs> our teacher's a scammer. I realize this now. I'm a grade one teacher. We used to do story time. Yeah. And listen to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and like mm. Roll Doll and stuff. And we'd sit there. And then, oh, it's like, my news of the weekend. And each person tells my news. And then she goes, oh, my shoulders are tight. Doesn't anybody want it? And it's like, me, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. That's brilliant. Because oh, oh, you've, you've got 30 willy and they've got stamina. Yeah. <laughs> So then she's like, oh my goodness, he's so good. You should actually be a physiotherapist. I'm like, that sounds so fancy. I have to do it. <laughs> and since she then, like, it. done. Yeah. yeah. So I think when I was a kid, it was just the concept of wanting to do something that sounded hard. And then I met somebody, a family friend that was a physio. And um, she, I remember her treating my mom's neck. And mm. she would have these like magical points. And this person's like, oh, yeah. it's so, so ah, there's the pain going. And I was like, what? You can heal, you know? And like, and that was cool because like, I think I'd always just been a very fidgety, like curious child. So it's interesting that I I'd, I'd managed to kind of mush that into like some type of clay to make something usable. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like a weird interest. I've got an issue with my neck. Do you mind just? Uh, <laughs> um, what's it? It's a, what's my rate on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon? <laughs> I used to just tell people they had cancer because they'd ask me out like on a Friday night. They'd be like, what's this pain? I'm like, you're going to die in six months. <laughs> Don't say that. I'm like, well, that's well, what you, you get for yes, free. Yeah, yes. <laughs> That's, that's my free opinion. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So you, you closed down your, so you're now like 27 when you close it down? No, oh, no. Then, when you close it uh, down. Yeah. I was 20. Yes. The week I turned. Yeah. It's 27. 27. Right. So, 27, 27. so you close it down. Then what, what next? What happens after that? Um, then I actually move into a very, very structured corporate multinational, like very corporate company. And, yeah. Every person that like within my space and also like just to like discuss my business as my job. I'm, I know I'm responsible as a person outside of like the flash of being a singer. 